Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Fiscal Philosophy YouTube channel, Walgreens Boots Alliance, WBA. This stock, oh my, what a thorn in my side it has been for the longest time. And those of you who watch the Cashflow Kings channel, where I uh, host a live show along with Ryan Dangler of The Ryan Dangler Show, check out the link to the description in that below. You will know that I recently sold my stake in Walgreens Boots Alliance. As you can see, the stock has done pretty much nothing but plummet for the last year or so. Now, I do strongly consider valuation when I buy or sell any stock. I've called myself a value investor a number of times, and this was not simply a matter of the stock is down a lot, therefore I'm going to sell it. After the most recent earnings release, I learned some information that I didn't like that I felt changed my whole outlook on the stock. And the reasons that I got into the stock in the first place are no longer valid, in my opinion, going forward. And I sort of gave myself a 24 hour cooling off period and said, if I don't have any reasons left to hold, I've got to sell. When I had first entered the position, the CEO was Rosalind Brewer. The market in general seemed to have high hopes for what she could accomplish as the uh, CEO of Walgreens. Walgreens had received a bit of a bump in their business from COVID and inflation had yet to rear its ugly head and retail theft didn't seem as much of an issue at the time as it is today. Also, this was prior to certain settlements paid due to opioid related lawsuits that have also impaired Walgreens. So things looked relatively decent and compared to the money that they generated, Walgreens looked relatively cheap on paper based on a quick view of their financials. Also, back at that time, the Village MD concept was something that they were more or less putting out front and center as the future of Walgreens. Get your primary care and fill your prescriptions in one place, and this brings more traffic into their retail locations. So. You know, while you're you know, visiting your doctor and picking up your prescription, you also might grab a few things and maybe you, you need some shampoo or detergent or something. Seemed like it could have been a win-win for their business had it worked out. I also think that this concept would have appealed really well to perhaps the largest consumer of healthcare goods and services, the elderly, who oftentimes they need to get a ride to their doctor and the efficiency for them of being able to visit the doctor, get the prescription filled and do some shopping all at once seems like it would have made sense. And that same target audience, in my view, would have been a lot less likely to, for example, switch to an Amazon pharmacy or a Mark Cuban pharmacy, which those are kind of emerging threats and competition in the retail pharmacy space. At the same time, the new CEO, Tim Wentworth, is the one that was supposed to turn things around after the departure of Rosalind Brewer, and he was supposed to be the healthcare guy, the one with deep healthcare experience. At the same time, they're backing away from Village MD, which was the sort of, I thought, the healthcare part of the business that was going to be the future. He's asking for patience on the turnaround, but the part of the business I thought he was there to build up and turn around was Village MD. And if he's not doing that, then I'm struggling personally to understand what the vision actually is going forward. What is the restructure? What is the new plan? What is the turned around Walgreens? What will that look like? I don't seem to, to get a lot of clarity on this. When Tim Wentworth first took over, it was a pretty bleak looking time for Walgreens investors. And I told myself, hey, this is a guy that 
is going to focus on the healthcare aspect of the business and really bring Walgreens into that next phase that I bought into in the first place. And I agreed that I, with myself, that I was going to give him time to articulate what that plan is. But now it seems as though they're writing off the whole Village MD concept as a mistake instead of turning it around. And I don't really know what they're replacing it with or what exactly it is that the new Walgreens of the future is going to look like. Because frankly, there's other options to get your prescription meds. There's other options for shopping and they aren't necessarily poised to be the best at either thing. So I'd like to get into some of the lessons that one might learn from an experience like this, investing in a stock, overpaying and it being a mistake. First, dividend aristocrats are not safe, or there may be some dividend aristocrats that are relatively safe, but that designation in and of itself does not make an investment safe nor good. I certainly believed at the time that the aristocrat status made Walgreens a little bit more stable, less volatile, and safer than it actually ended up being in reality. This is because things can change and retail can turn bad fast. The second lesson is that just because a concept is decent doesn't necessarily mean it will be profitable or make money or to return value to shareholders if the execution is not equally as good. A good concept with poor execution may as well be a bad concept. There are sound and logical reasons to think that, for example, Village MD might have been a good concept. But clearly, even if it was a good concept, the execution was not up to the task of making it a profitable business unit for Walgreens. A similar idea on another stock I cover sometimes is Oatly, where their oat milk products have what seems to be a pretty decent following. I get comments every time from people saying they like the products and that they prefer them over other non-dairy milk alternatives. But when you look at the numbers, it looks like as far as executing it as a business, they're not doing the greatest job. So this brings us back to just the idea that a good concept, a good product, an innovation, whatever it is, unless it is executed well, does not necessarily make it a good investment. Analysts, for whatever they're worth, have a consensus of hold with a high price target at $30, which is kind of surprising, but you can actually DCF your way into um, a 25 to $30 valuation on this with certain assumptions that don't seem terribly unreasonable. The problem is I sit here and I can't articulate a good reason why I would continue to hold the stock into the future for some kind of actual return, mainly because the situation on the ground has changed since I bought in and it's no longer the same Walgreens and it no longer is the same vision. And other than the fact that it's perhaps undervalued on paper through a DCF model is no longer compelling to me if I don't have a good reason behind any of the assumptions I might make in that model to begin with. How can I project any growth in their earnings or cash flows if I don't know what their vision is to achieve that? How do I know what's reasonable? It's not going to be Village MD, which was what I thought in the past. So since that has now changed, now is Walgreens a dead business? I don't think so. I think they're a relatively slow growing or stagnant business that has experienced some challenges with their margins, quite frankly. And while I don't think they're necessarily heading for zero, I think they have a fairly long journey ahead and we don't yet know what the new Walgreens will look like. 
if today's price is a fair price for that Walgreens, or if it's if it is perhaps worth more than what it's trading for today. But it's safe to say that with regards to Walgreens, burn it. Whatever you want. My watch is ended. If your watch continues, make sure you shoot me a paper hands comment in the comment section. Subscribe to the channel for more. Like the video for the algorithm. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Mr. Macho Mog. Join the Discord, link in the description, and join us Saturday 8 p.m. Cashflow Kings Live. Link in the description for a high tide stock roundtable. Take it easy, everyone.